welcome back to my channel. My name is Dagny. In today's video, we're going to talk about seven things that I wish I knew when I first started dancing tango that would have made my life a little bit easier. On my channel, I do tutorials, give tips, and typically travel, although that hasn't been happening recently. And so if you'd like all things Argentine tango, don't forget to subscribe below and follow me on my Instagram here or for my personal account here. Let's go. The first thing that I wish I did early was buy a proper pair of tango shoes. I think this was actually mostly because I couldn't find a good pair that fit, but I was definitely wearing my first pair of ballroom shoes a little bit too long. I definitely recommend using ballroom shoes right at the beginning. They tend to be more accessible, easier to find, and um, they're pretty comfortable because they tend to have, if you're not doing Latin ballroom shoes, the regular ballroom shoes tend to have a wide base for the heel. But if I could go back knowing that I would have been dancing now for seven years, I wish I got my first pair of tango shoes earlier. The second thing that I wish I knew earlier and I'm still struggling to find today is different shapes of tango shoes. So I dance under normal circumstances for hours a day and it's very difficult to find a pair of shoe that fits. Everyone knows this. If you find a pair and a style that fit you, you often end up with multiple of the same shoe, but just in different colors. And so that's been my situation right now. I have four, possibly more. I've gone through at least four to six pairs of the same exact shoe, the same color. I have one in nude and one in gold, but it's the same shape. And so here I'll show you. Um, I have this pair with me right now and it's most of my shoes are the shape so in the front it's hitting right at my toe my big toe right here and dancing for hours in the shoe becomes uncomfortable because all of the pressure is right here so the shape and the fit of the shoe has been fantastic for me this is a bandolera model um, for my narrow feet it's been working out very well but i've been struggling to find a different pair that fits my narrow feet um, that aren't cutting off right here, which is a very typical style. Um, but I'm looking for one that has like a bigger covering and so it's at least hitting a different part of the foot. And so had I known earlier, um, I would have tried to find different pairs of shoes, especially when people are traveling through to sell them because the longevity and the health of my feet in the long run would be much benefited if I was able to switch out the different types of shoes that I have. And I'll insert a video here showing you a different kind of shoe that I have with a different front, which has been helping me a lot. My next tip is going to be about clothing. So most of the ladies can probably guess what the first thing we do is if we're trying to figure out if the outfit is good for tango. I'll give you a second to see if you can guess. If you guess sidestep, then you're correct. Whenever I'm checking out some new clothing, the first thing that I do is do a sidestep. And I've gone through many an outfit, only realizing when I'm dancing, especially early on, that I can't take a full side step. That's not good. I like to be comfortable in my clothing. I mean, sometimes for tight milongas, you can get away with wearing something tighter. Actually, that's a bonus tip. Save your outfits that you like that are too tight to take a huge wide step for super crowded milongas or smaller milongas, because that way you're not, you know you're not going to be taking a big side step anyway. So that's a bonus tip but I wish I knew to check the sidestep test uh, much earlier in my tango dancing when I was looking for outfits. My next tip is another clothing tip. And so I have found it incredibly useful to know how to dance, know how to pick clothing for my body shape to dance in. Uh, clothing for when you're dancing is almost a different game because you have to be able to move freely and you don't wanna worry about any accidents happening as you're dancing. And so I know for me, I feel most comfortable when I have a, a top that's cutting off at a higher point because then I can move my arms and not have an accident. Uh, but every body shape is going to be different. And so finding out the cuts and the shapes that most flatter your body type and work best for you is amazingly helpful when you're picking out clothing because the last thing we want to feel is uncomfortable when we're on the dance floor. I just hate having to worry about like straps falling off and being uncomfortable in my clothing because it detracts from the enjoyment of the dance. So knowing your body type and finding your best clothing shapes is definitely a must when you're dancing tango. Okay, I don't know how I feel about this next tip, but I'm still going back and forth. It's a debate in my soul whether or not I should be eating late. I know it's horrible for us. We're not supposed to be eating late. 
but after we dance for hours and hours, I'm personally always starving at the end. And so yeah, it's 2 a.m., but I feel so hungry. And so I feel like I've ebbed and flowed of how much I like to eat after milonga. There were periods where I was like, I don't care, I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat a huge meal. And then other periods where I'm like, the doctors say that you shouldn't be eating before you go to bed and it's 3 a.m. and I shouldn't be eating. I, I really don't know if you have any sort of like gastric issues, you should definitely not be eating late. But now I know to pack a snack, I at least pack a granola bar so I'm not going to be eating a huge meal after Tango. Often, you know, like 24 hour pizza places are the only thing that's open and Koreatown, there's always 24 hour places there in New York City. But you know, it can be pretty heavy, especially super late at night. And so now I know to pack a light snack and sometimes also bring like a banana or an apple with me. So that way I know I have something to eat after the milonga without bombing my stomach. I also really like popcorn. Popcorn is always a great uh, munchy snack for me after I dance. I feel like this could have been the first thing that I wish I knew, but I definitely didn't realize how late tango would run. I sort of knew that it was danced later, right when I began tango, but I never envisioned myself staying up until the crack of dawn, especially if I'm traveling for a marathon and seeing the sunrise, getting home from dancing after a full day. So I think that's something that I would have liked to know because I feel like it definitely impacts my lifestyle, but I love it and it's unique. I'm just wondering how after this pandemic uh, plays out, if communities of tango are going to start to have uh, events earlier, I can definitely see that happening because it's just not good for us to be so sleep deprived and you know going to sleep super super late getting up for corporate work it just is kind of not conducive to most people's lifestyle thankfully i am able to set my own hours for the freelance work that i do but it's really not healthy to go to sleep you know five in the morning and have to get up at seven for um, you know your work day and so I wonder how uh, coronavirus is going to impact tango communities if we're going to be starting earlier. That's actually something I could see happening. We implement earlier event times and we end a little bit earlier too. Okay, I'm going to end with this most, most, most important one. <sighs> Are you ready? Know when your body is hurting. I'm gonna say it again. Know when your body is hurting. And that can be you know, any aches, any creaks, any pains, being very aware of when your body is telling you something's painful is incredibly important when you're doing tango and when you're doing any dance or any sport, any kind of movement, being in tune with your body, trying to tell you yes, no, maybe for moves is incredibly important for your overall health and health in the long term. I ended up having a surgery about three years ago for my ankle after pushing my ankle into positions that it really shouldn't have been in in tango, but I was also doing other activities. I was doing ballet and Krav Maga. And so I was doing a lot of heavy physical activity and I was not respecting and honoring the limits of my body and doing high impact um, kicks and spending hours in heels. So know when your body is telling you to stop, slow down, pause and reassess alignment. And that's why in a lot of my videos, I'm so focused on alignment and finding the proper alignment for your own body because it's for everyone, it's going to be a little bit different and you never want to push yourself into pain or try to copy somebody else and what they're doing only to hurt yourself trying to emulate that technique. So what I really wish I knew right when I started Tango was to listen to my body and honor it and learn to rest as well. So I hope you take my story and um, really check when you're dancing to make sure, oh, are you feeling a knee pain every single time you do a particular turn? Is there something that you can do to adjust that pain before it becomes a problem, before it becomes a chronic injury? So just check yourself and we'll all be dancing for many years to come. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. I suppose the first thing I should have said was, I didn't know I would be teaching tango and I had absolutely no clue I would be starting a YouTube channel based on Argentine tango either. So I just want to thank you again for sticking with me to the end. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe so that way you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time. Bye. And they were actually holding up pretty well. And so they were about a quarter, quarter, yeah.